Hello brothers and sisters, this is Lisa and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, Why does the Bible say the Lord is a jealous God when jealousy is wrong? There are different types of jealousy. One is driven by selfishness and control. The other is motivated by exclusive love. For instance, parents can be jealous for the lives of their children. Many would give up their own lives to ensure a son's or daughter's well-being. Watching over your children and being sensitive to evil influences around them is a type of jealousy that is good. In the same way, our Heavenly Father is jealous over us. He watches over and protects us. When you think of how the devil hates us and wants to harm us, it's good to know that we have a jealous God who will stand up in our defense. What might we think about a spouse who wasn't jealous if their partner committed adultery? We could conclude they don't really care about their relationship. Another angle on understanding God's jealousy is to remember that the Lord is righteous. God's emotions are not like man's emotions which are tainted with sin. Also, the Lord understands that we cannot serve him with a divided heart. God does not share his glory with other gods. We cannot serve the Lord and serve another. One of the clearest warnings on this topic is found later in Exodus. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord God, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they play the harlot with their gods, and make sacrifice to their gods, and one of them invites you and you eat of his sacrifice. Exodus 34, verses 12 through 15. I'm glad God loves us enough to be jealous of our relationship with him. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Exodus 20, verse 5. And that is the end of the first devotional. And the second one is titled, The Beauty of Christ-Likeness. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Romans 12, verse 18. To every soul things will come to provoke to stir up anger, and, you've, and if you are not under the full control of God, you will be provoked when these things come. But the meekness of Christ calms the ruffled spirit, controls the tongue, and brings the whole being into subjection to God. Thus we learn how to bear with the censor of others. We shall be misjudged, but the precious ornament of a meek and quiet spirit teaches us how to bear, how to have pity for those who utter hasty, unadvised words. Any unpleasant spirit displayed is sure to arouse the demon of passion in unguarded hearts. Unholy anger need not to be strengthened, but bridled. It is a spark which will set on fire untamed human nature. Avoid speaking words which will stir up strife. Rather suffer wrong than do wrong. God requires every one of his followers, as far as is possible, to live peaceably with all men. We must be Christ-like. Let us strive to make our lives what Christ designs them to be, full of the fragrance of love to God and our fellow men. 
full of Christ's own divine spirit, full of holy aspirations toward God, rich in beauty of Christ-likeness. And that is the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you all is titled, Speaking with Care. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Ephesians 4 verse 29. If you are grieved because your neighbors or friends are doing wrong to their own hurt, if they are overtaken in fault, follow the Bible rule. Tell him his fault between thee and him alone. As you go to the one you suppose to be in error, see that you speak in a meek and lowly spirit. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The erring can be in no other way be restored than in the spirit of meekness and gentleness and tender love. Be careful in your manner. Avoid anything in look or gesture, word or tone of voice that savors of pride or self-sufficiency. Guard yourself against a word or look that would exalt self or present your goodness as righteousness in contrast with their failings. Beware of the most distant approach to disdain, overbearing, or contempt. With care, avoid every appearance of anger, and though you use plainness of speech, yet let there be no reproach no railing accusation, but that of earnest love. Above all, let there be no shadow of hate or ill will, no bitterness, nor soreness of expression. Nothing but kindness and gentleness can flow from a heart of love. Yet all these precious fruits need not hinder your speaking in the most serious, solemn manner as though angels were directing their eyes upon you, and you were acting in reference to the coming judgment. Bear in mind that the success of reproof depends greatly upon the spirit in which it is given. Do not neglect earnest prayer that you may possess a lowly mind and that angels of God may work upon the hearts you are trying to reach before you and so soften them by heavenly impressions that your efforts may avail. If any good is accomplished, take no credit to yourself. God alone should be exalted. God alone hath done it all. And that is the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.